Well, hello, everybody. This is Dr. Bill Williams, and I'm coming to you today from Swanee, Georgia, and going to talk about the seven mountain strategies. And that's for growing your own passive business. So today, stay tuned for some fun, some interesting information about the seven mountain marketing system. I'll tell you a little bit about that system. I started teaching dentists how to market their practices better after learning from Johnny Enlow about the seven mountain strategy that he taught in his book. And that strategy was basically how to build influence in circles in your community so that you have a successful business. And Johnny had a church and he was building a community around his church. And so I took that information and and placed it on the dental business that I ran for 20 years here in Swanee. And it turned out that we were far and above more successful in marketing and getting the word out and becoming the number one place to go, the go-to dentist in Swanee. And so as I, I taught that to dentists all around the country and other countries around the world, people began to see that their practices, their businesses would grow. So this is a universal truth, this, this Seven Mountain concept. And if you can put it to use in on passive, if you can take it and modify the thinking to fit what we're doing in on passive, then you're going to be able to grow your business, grow your team to an outstanding size that's going to make everybody a winner. We're already winners in on passive, but this is going to help you grow faster if your desire is to, to become a builder, to become a bigger business than would grow automatically by the natural system that on passive is put in place. So what I want to do is share the screen here. And we're going to look at exactly what it is that we're doing in on passive. Seven Mountain Strategy for Business Growth in on Passive. That's the title. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So here we go. Seven Mountain Strategy for Business Growth is something that will potentially double, triple, quadruple your business locally as you apply it, as you look at how you can serve people better through the Seven Mountain Strategies. And so I want to take you through the cycle. This marketing cycle means that you will approach different groups, different centers of influence around your community, around the state, even in the nation. And you can see as we go through this, how eloquently Ash Mafarth has done that already in, in approaching the centers of influence as he builds his marketing plan and expands the campaigns. So I'll try to highlight some of them that I've seen as we go through this. First of all, we wanna talk about the government as the first mountain to focus on. To uh, focus on the government, you have to do that because they're the ones who control everything. The, the idea is to be involved with your government and to work with others like yourself who are after the one goal of bettering your community. And if you can come at it from that point of view, then working with the government will be a plus. Second mountain we're going to be talking with about is education. Becoming involved with the education process, serving your local educators and school systems would be a, a, a serious uh, benefit to you if you can become an insider rather than working from the outside. They're the ones who are influential in much of the community because they're so involved with the children and how many people have their children in schools. So the education process needs to be something we're totally involved with. The media is the third mountain, and that is a mountain of belief, crafting the image and voicing the practice by proactively investing and guiding your PR efforts and your marketing efforts so that you use the media wisely. Fourth mountain is the mountain of economy or business that's called Main Street. The mountain of opportunity is the mountain of e economy. We wanna apply the principles of the other mountains together with the mountain of economy because it takes money to accomplish anything in life and business. And so we want to excel in the mountain of the economy and 
Of course, that is one of the strong points of on passive. Fifth mountain is interesting, and you're going to enjoy this one when we get to talk in more detail about it. The mountain of celebration is where we utilize the mountain of influence through service and community involvement. And I, I think that's the most fun one to be involved in because you do so many things that you do as uh, hobbies, as enjoyment, things you do after work. Finally, the uh, last two, the family, the mountain of provision. You take care of your family, you provide. We want to understand the importance of providing service to the whole family. The family that you live in, in your house, the family around you, the family of your community, the family of your neighbors, but also the family of mankind. We want to benefit the, the entire family of mankind through this philosophy of Seven Mountain Marketing Cycle. And finally, the, the last one is religion or spirituality. And we can't deny that the source of power in our world and through personal growth is the spirituality that's based within us. Love is the, um, the answer to many things. And if we can serve our community and we can harness the power of this mountain, then we can actually move mountains. And that's one of the things that we want to focus on and on passive is being a source for good and spreading the love around the world. Now, when we start to make up a game plan for everything related to the seven mountain marketing strategies, first thing we have to do is decide. If you're gonna decide and go in a direction to a place, you gotta say, which mountain is most important? If you're gonna tackle a mountain, you can't usually do all of them at one time. So you say, rank them in order of importance and say, what's the most important mountain? Can I leverage my resources? What I've got to work with, money, the time, my resources of people that work with me, how can I leverage those so that I can go from here to the next level and keep moving forward? How can both of us win is the next question. We don't want to have a win-lose situation ever. We want to always have people win on both sides of the equation. And so how can you win? What tools do I need? What do I need to have in my hands, in my brain, as far as a tool? Maybe the software, maybe a physical tool. What do I need to succeed? Does on passive have that solution? That'll be a major thing for us to decide what we offer people to help them be better able to succeed in business, to succeed in life. So what does your success look like is the next question. What does it mean to succeed? How do you know you even reach success? So we have to answer that question before we start our process. And what do successful leaders do? What is a leader gonna do that's gonna separate them from average? A leader is somebody who's above average in what they do to lead others to that place where we have a goal to reach, right? And so leaders should have some focus on what they're actually going to do. Here's some leadership thinking questions that need answering. Who's in charge and who's gonna make the decisions? If you're approaching a mountain, a center of influence, like we're talking about government, who's in charge? You know, what department do you have to go to and who's in charge before you can get something done? What do they need to succeed? What do they need to allow you to go through the gate? What do they need in a communication package? How do you communicate to them? Text, phone, personal visits. What's the most cost-effective method of reaching that person, of reaching your goal? Can I participate in the celebration is the next question. Can I be a part of what they're already doing, the celebration? See, if you can participate in a celebration, as we'll learn later, you become more powerful. You don't have to set up everything to do the celebration every time. But if you can participate in the celebration, you're more powerful. And finally, how can I share in the trust? People that trust will buy from you. You know, the, the thing about it is, if I'm a dentist and I wanna offer treatment to somebody, they're gonna have to trust me before I am allowed to work on them. And so I have to build their trust. You do it with thoroughness, you do it with empathy, you do it with compassion, and you, you do it by listening. So there are different skills that you have, interpersonal skills, emotional intelligence that you have that will allow you to share the, in the trust with others. 
And so we want to build that rapport. As we go through the different spheres of influence, the government, the education, the media, the economy, your families, the celebration, and the religious and spiritual groups, everything is tied together. There's a cycle of moving through these where they're connected sometimes, sometimes you're not. Sometimes you'll work with two or three of them together and you'll have a multiple influence going on when you work with these different groups. And so as you think about on passive and you think about how we're gonna approach people in our community to come on board and learn more about on passive, particularly right now, if we're talking about pre-launch, as the marketing campaigns just started and before the global launch, what's that part right in the middle what game plan would you establish? And that's what we're going to talk about today at the end is what can you do right now to get ready for the global launch? And then right after that, it would just continue. So the game plan was be first to establish a strategy. If you don't have a strategy, there's no use having a game. You establish the beachheads. That means you get your toe hole in a place, one of the mountains, more than one of the mountains that you want, and you, just, you establish a place that you can work from, a beachhead. And once you get to be inside and get to be known, then you can start gaining the trust of the people in that area of influence, that mountain. So if you wanna gain the trust of somebody in government, maybe you could work on their campaign. Maybe you could support them as they get elected. Maybe you could donate to their cause, their campaign. You achieve stature, you know, if you put in the time, you put in the effort, you put in the money, you get the results a little, little, little more, a little more, then you gain stature and you become important to them in that fact that you have shown them that you're trustworthy, loyal, helpful, and that you are somebody who's an advocate for them. And so then they rest with reciprocity. They allow you to come forward in their organization. And then you become a leader at some point in time in your community in that area of influence. So then we talk about how to dominate the mountain. That means you're the top person in the area. Like I was in the Chamber of Commerce, just started out and I started showing up at the meetings. I started donating to the causes, my time and my money. And then I started to advance through the ranks and I got to the point where I was achieving a stature. And I soon became a leader and eventually I dominated the mountain and we were the number one dentist in our entire community because of our affiliation with the Chamber of Commerce. And so you just put in your time and you get your reward. That's part of the system that we're talking about. So we're going to go through each mountain and talk about a specific point or two and then move on to some examples of how you can bring on passive in front of those mountains. So the government mountain is one where there are many employees, there are many people that work for the government. And if you're a business, you want them to come into your sphere because they're gonna be customers and purchasers. Maybe the government itself will purchase your goods and services. And so you need to be knowing who's in the government and who are the leaders and who are the influencers. You gain influence by supporting and working in the campaigns, serving them and meeting their needs as we talked about earlier. It's increasingly important that this mountain should be conquered, that you become not just somebody that's known by the government, but somebody who's revered by the government. When you have the government on your side, things go much smoother. So the power and the control are there to start, start you, stop you, hinder you, or influence you to go forward, depending on how well you react to them. You have red tape and regulations that you have to overcome. And if you do it right, and you're on the right side of government, then they pave the way for your success. The education mountain is the mountain of learning. Learning is important, and we want to play a major role in the mountain of education as we roll out Academy, for instance. The teachers, the coaches, the educators, the administrators, they are all people who can participate with us in our own passive but And we have to use our resources and we have to influence people here with our potential benefits to them without threatening them to take away their uh, perceived benefits that they have in the system that they already run. 
So it's a fine line between how we approach these people, how we approach these governmental entities that teach or the private institutions that teach. It's their minds that are formed and their attitudes that are established by the system they work in, right? Well, that's where the teachers, administrators, and coaches. What about the students, the people that are the subjects of the teachers? Well, maybe they're looking for a better way. Maybe the teachers are looking for a better way. And so with the tools we have, we want to partner the people that want something better and different with those who are looking for that. And we don't want to run afoul of the people who want to keep it the same way in a classroom. We want to work with them to support them also. So it's a fine line. So there's a control environment the way it's been, or there's an independent environment the way it could be. And so Academy is going to basically be the champion of the independent environment. But we have to make sure that the control environment is supported and we give them enough support to where they don't fear what we're doing as a takeaway. But it is a positive that will help build their business if they have distance learning, the teachers and the coaches will be able to use our products maybe to improve the mountain of education. So we support them, they support us. The third mountain is a mountain called media and it's a mountain of belief. Where do we get our belief from? It's what what we hear all the time, what we see all the time, that forms what we believe. And so, you know, there's a lot of positive and a negative talk right now about what the media is doing and where they are with the truth and where they are with uh, false narratives. And so this is an area that's very important for us to show up in and create our own positive narrative. We want to invest our PR, our public relations and our marketing budgets and time and efforts to control the media coverage. We don't want to let it just happen. We want to be proactive. We want to let this be an avenue for our growth. And you can see that very rapidly happening in Dubai with what Ash has done with the uh, Burj Khalifa and all the signs around the ice rink and down the avenues and all the shopping malls. The PR and the marketing is creating a narrative. Influence comes from being proactive. And that's what we're gaining right now in Dubai. Much, much positive reaction to the work we're doing in Dubai right now. So media bias is actually going to naturally go towards reporting negative news. If you're talking about the evening news, particularly. We want to drive the narrative toward positive for on passive. And so we want to stay out of the media negative news cycle and we want to be in the news cycle that's positive. We want to use the media, but don't be at the mercy of the media because the media is the mountain of belief. And we want to create belief that, of course, on passive is an excellent, excellent company. And it's not something to worry about, but something to, to cheer and celebrate. The next mountain, the mountain of economy, is the mountain of opportunity. I mean, this is where the money comes from. This is where the sales happen. This is where the people who do commerce live. So we want to show up big in front of those people. And it doesn't take a prayer just to be there. You can do it with positive attitude and focus on the abundance connection. Well, I believe, and a lot of people believe, that scarcity is not where we are in our worldview, but it is in abundance. We believe that there is an unlimited flow of income and resources for anyone on earth, and that basically we're not a closed loop system, which teaches the poverty mentality. If you believe in poverty mentality, you believe there's only a certain amount of things created and once people divide them up, there's no more for anybody else. Well, we don't believe that. We believe there's an endless supply of benefits that people can achieve from the um, passive system. And we teach that. We teach unlimited wealth and opportunity for those who seek it and work for it. And our influence is gained as we change the mindset of people to believe in abundance versus believe in, in scarcity. And I always want to focus on this one part of the mountain of opportunity is first you must give and then you receive. That's the boomerang effect. Whatever you put out will come back to you as long as you throw it right. The boomerang won't come back if you don't throw it right. And so you have to give properly 
and you'll receive properly. And that's scriptural, and that's proven out many times over many of our lives. Now, the next mountain we're going to talk about is the family, the mountain of provision. Provision is basically that we take care of our family. We provide. We don't abandon our family. That's one of the principles of on passive is we take care of each other. And so when we're talking about the, the family and the mountain of provision, we want to say that this is where we build our legacy. This is where our family is taken care of first, and then we go out and take care of others. Being flexible enough, however, to serve all families through Oblis. Our family is not just a small unit that lives in our house, right? Our family is who else lives in our community that has a, a need. Our family is our nation. Our family is our people. And so we want to take care of our people and ultimately the whole human race. We want to be capable of benefiting our entire family, our entire community, and our nation economically through these seven mountains and how we provide. We want to influence people and we want to lead this whole thing to build what we call the family dynasty. The family dynasty is where you're not taking care of just your single family this year, this month, but you're taking care of your family for generations. You build it now and take care of your family for the next 200 years because you built it now. And so that's the strength of what Unpassive is. We can build to the point where everything is taken care of financially and that we can focus then on increasing the strength and foundation that we have. We can help others more. We can help those in need more when we have everything we need personally. Let's go to the next mountain, which is a mountain. And I told you this was going to be one of your favorites, the mountain of celebration. And this is actually the mountain of one of the biggest influences that we have. And influence meaning that people pay attention to the mountain of celebration because it involves the arts and fashion and sports and entertainment. It involves things we do in our free time. Once we're finished work, we want to have some time to enjoy the world, enjoy life. And the arts, well, we can go and do things that are artistic or self-expression, um, things that are beautiful in nature. We can, we can go out and do photography, take pictures. We can celebrate those things and have all kinds of uh, exhibitions and museums studying the history of man, or we can go out and enjoy a sports event. We can play sports or we can go to the baseball game, the football game, soccer, basketball. We can, we can do sports and watch people compete. And when we do that, we set up icons. When we go out and create entertainment venues and have movies, have TV screens, when we have entertainment, which is like live theater, we have people who become stars, superstars. You've heard of all the superstars, Joe Namath, uh, Michael Jordan. You've heard of the people, Pele, in the soccer world. Fashion, how about Versace? How about um, people that create designs that are fantastic? Those people, we celebrate them as icons. And so what happens when we make stars and icons out of individuals. Well, people look up to them and they become people of influence. They have something about them that people aspire to be like. Well, could be that uh, Bill Gates or Donald Trump or um, Elon Musk would be somebody who's good in the business world and people aspire to be like them. If those people are good in the business world, then other people hang around them and they get something called the halo effect. The halo effect is when you hang around successful people, others feel like you're successful too because you're accepted in their group. Well, the mountain of celebration makes that a very serious center of influence. And if you want to be more influential, then you hang around successful people, influential people, superstars, icons. So that's part of the, the idea in, uh, on passive. If you hang around the successful people, you'll become successful too. If you do what successful people do, you're likely to become successful. It's been said that books you read and the people you get to know will 
dictate where you are five years from now. And that's true because you're hanging around successful people, reading the works of successful people. What about the last mountain, mountain of religion or spirituality? Well, that's the mountain of, of extreme power because everything comes from the Lord. Everything comes from above as far as our strength and our uh, ability to, to dream and hope. And we get our loyalty and our trust in other people because they are spiritually grounded. And so we know that love conquers all. We know that work, when done properly, is actually an act of worship. That we're serving somebody when we're working. And you're better off if you're not serving just the person you work for, but you're, you're serving the Lord as you work, because that means that you are doing God's work. So we always have our institutions. We have our mission projects. And we reward people who do good things, right? And so I think one of the things about the mountain of re religion and spirituality is that we get rewarded for doing good things for people. We get rewarded in spiritual means, in our own heart. And it's known that you feel better helping others to, when you give than when you actually receive. And so it could be that this is the most ignored mountain of all, yet it's the most powerful mountain of all. So we want to promote and on passive that this is important and it's a source of all pro provision that everything comes from above and is given to us. And it's our duty to use it wisely, as they say, be a good steward. So I want to say that we want to carry the influence of God with us in our family, in our life, in our business. And that will lead us to being a blessing to others. It's more blessed to give than receive. And it's, it's a blessing to be a blessing to others. So I always feel like the one reason that I joined on Passive was because they shared my beliefs and it, they were like me. They believed in the blessing. They believed in sharing the blessing once we received our blessing. So that's the power of religion, power of spirituality. Now, what's our next step? For each mountain, you really have to back up and say again, Who's in charge? What do I need to do to go to them to support them? In other words, what do they need from me? How can I get my message out to them, to the mountain, to those that are in influence already, so that I can be more able to succeed in that area? What's the most effective cost technique to be involved? Cost effective method. Who makes these decisions? that are gonna affect my success? Can I participate in the celebration? We had a, a deserving diva makeover in our dental practice, and we always spent six months to a year going through a process of selecting a deserving person for the award, doing the dental work, making their complete mouth over, and then going to the hairdresser, the makeup place, the clothing outfitters, and, and really doing up everything so that they could be presented to the public on the red carpet. And so we did the groundwork and then we found a celebration that was happening and we were able to go to this um, big auditorium with hundreds of people in it. And our people that we did the makeovers marched down in a, in a, like a beauty pageant with the uh, designer clothes on and dazzle them with a smile as part of the uh, participation in the celebration. I didn't have to set up the big meeting, but I did prepare the models to go down the runway and look beautiful. And so we participated in somebody else's celebration and had our own celebration. And in the process, we were given a lot of uh, exposure, given a lot of a credit for being generous to help these people in the deserving diva makeovers. And so that's how you can celebrate and participate in somebody else's celebration. Just an example. How can I share in the trust? You know, the ultimate goal of any of these mechanisms of interaction is to get the people to trust you because it's only people who trust you who will buy from you. So we want people to be buying all the on passive goodies that we have in the ecosystem. 
in the products to come. We want people to believe in us because if they believe in us, they're going to believe it on passive. That's where it starts and that's where it ends. So you create your game plan by saying, what's the most important mountain? How can I leverage my resources? How can we both win? What are the tools I need? And, you know, on past has got the bag of tools, many, many tools for internet success, business success. And we're going to excel in how, how to get the tools in the people's hands for the best value, right? What does success look like? We have to decide that. When you go out to do something, you can't just walk in the door and not know when you win. And so how do we figure out what success looks like? We put that down in part of our game plan. You know the end before you start. Then you work back from the end to the beginning, figure all the steps out, and that's how you game plan everything out. What do leaders do? That's the final question. If you want to be a successful leader, you need to know what other leaders do that are successful. Follow the successful people. Let's go through now and connect the dots with four of our major products, O-Connect, O-Net, O-Academy, and O-Bless. We're gonna have an action plan for each one of how we would approach somebody. Now, Ash was talking the other day about how valuable YouTube is. He was talking about people watching YouTube three or four hours a day to, per, per week, rather, and some people per day. YouTube is a new search king. It's like taking over for Google as people wanna find something because it shows you how to do it. It gives you more specifics. It's more uh, direct. And so I've been using YouTube for a much uh, greater degree in the last couple of months, just since I heard that. On passive is different, like YouTube is different from Google. It's more uh, focused, it's more specific. And so as we develop on passive, we want to be like YouTube and that we want to become the major next search engine. People that are looking for something can find it on, on passive once we get it developed in full. We want to be the, the next big thing on the internet. So our network is equal our net worth. Network, that's a misspell. It says new work, but our network equals our net worth. And so the, the bigger your network, the number of people who are in your circle of influence that we just talked about the seven mountains of uh, marketing in the circle of influence. So the bigger your circle, the more your net worth will grow. And so that's the bottom line is if you can go out and create a group of people in each of those seven mountains who think that you are the one that knows the most in your area of expertise, then that's going to directly affect your net worth. Our value is our unique selling proposition. As we talk about why on passive, well, we have multiple products, a great ecosystem under the umbrella. We have continuity and we can leverage that, that everything's connected and we're the one-stop shop for all the tools. Those are the main things that we can leverage, the low cost, the high value. Everything's connected and we're unified when people see that, then all the internet marketing things that are in that one umbrella, they're going to never be able to say no. And I think there's really going to be a, a real easy sale. So the O-Connect first, we'll talk about, here are four ideas of how the platforms can help you grow your business, help on passive grow its total business. So you put together a podcast, a webinar, a podinar, as Dr. Kenora Shaw likes to call them, on any topic of high interest. And so that's what we've been doing as we've been working together in the medical and dental area is we've made podinars of medical topics and we presented them to thousands of doctors around the world. And so we're building tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of doctors who follow Dr. Kenora Shaw's uh, top 100 doctor group, who follows the um, Universal School of Health, and as we go through these processes, we get more and more influence and we get bigger and bigger notoriety. And so that's, that's all part of the process of expanding your group. Well, how is OConnect going to be able to play into that 
here's the way we would do it. We would take something we're doing, like the podcasts we do, the partners we do, the webinars, and we would send out an invitation to come and watch our our partner webinar on OConnect. The invitation goes out and people sign up. And what do they put down? They put down their email. They put down their phone number, maybe. They put down their name. And we capture that, and it's in our database. So then we can send them information about whatever we want to teach. And this is an example of teaching about uh, a smile building technique. And this is one of the books I wrote. So you could actually teach about whatever you know about. Whatever you're an expert in, you put it out and say, I'm going to teach on it. I'm going to do a free one-hour webinar. So you come and watch it. So when they set up that OConnect and you give them the free access, then they can register. And that lead generation capability that we have built into OConnect locks them in to us. So you invite all your people in the sphere of influence from Facebook, from Instagram, your email list, your Twitter group, your TikToks, and you send them an invitation to come to your presentation that you're putting together on OConnect. Once you have that and they register, whether they actually attend or not, they'll be permanently attached to your enrollment link. Once they put their name on the list, they're yours. Now, if they ever become a, a purchaser of a product from OnPassive, they have to come through your link. Our, our AI software remembers who's joined under who, right? So we can be more active and teach and share that means we're going to have a bigger group under us when they ever join on passive. And we feel like everybody's going to eventually join. Right. So they become part of our team. And it's going to be the same for the next product platform. Oh, net. It's going to be free for all to use it. Perhaps I think that's what I heard. And so we're going to set up our own accounts and we're going to create compelling content ahead of time, store it in a file, in a folder. And then whatever pictures, whatever videos you have, you can start showing them on your social media, the new platform called Onet. And if you show those to people, they're going to start logging in. They're going to start. They can't come in until they log in with their name and email. And so your game plan is basically to share your data, share your information that's interesting with people on a new social media platform. You invite them in, they make their own um, entry, they sign up for a free account, and then you make available interesting things to show. And as people start seeing it's interesting, they'll share it with their friends and they'll invite people in. When it's more interesting, you get bigger audiences. And so what you can do is you can go into Facebook and Instagram and TikTok, and you can invite people to come over with a good piece of teachable information and say, okay, you see this, come over and look at on net and have a free link. So you can get their attention with something cute. And then you can say, by the way, come over and see more of this cuteness, these videos on Onet, And you give them a free link to go over and see it. You invite all the others in to share that link with as many friends as they want. It's a viral photo, a viral video, something that people like. And if you can find those on the Internet, what goes most viral, copy and send it. Do things very similar. Cats and dogs, it doesn't matter. Whatever you're doing is basically whatever people are interested in. You're trying to mimic the posts that are most successful when you're doing the O-Net game plan, the action plan. Now, as an influencer, you can generate a lot more traffic, a lot more traffic. So you want to go after influencers to be in your group because they can become great uh, sources of people joining your team. If one influencer joins you, you may get 100,000 people join your team within a month, even a million. If an influencer likes Onet, they could become much larger than YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram financially for that influencer. You want to attract influencers because they're going to do better. If they do better, you do better. 
So just think about it, driving influencers to your website, to your ONET, very key strategy. Once they join, they become permanently attached to your enrollment link, and then their people that join will become members of OnPassive under you whenever they decide to buy something. Let's talk about Academy. This was one of my favorites, and I've been a teacher in industry since 1981. I started teaching dentists internationally in Toronto, Canada in 1981. And so we want to build courses with high interest. And so Academy is going to have high standards. And so you can count on anything that comes out of Academy not being just average. It's going to be good. And so you want to put together courses that instruct people to do things. And I taught one called consistency is a new currency talking about how to be successful by being consistent. We offer a free one, one series or one lesson and put it out on multiple medias. And then we can say, come to Academy and view it. Or we can put it on Academy for free and say, watch this episode for free. And then if you like it, you can come in and um, pay for the entire course. The thing is, you send this free content out to all your contacts and certain ones of them will want to visualize it. Even if it's free, they're not going to have to worry about paying for it, right? And so once they log in and enroll to the course, free or not, they're going to put their name, their address, their phone number, and then they're going to become actually part of the marketing for you because they're going to be on your team if they ever join on passive and then on passive once they have that name in the database they will start marketing to them all the other products and platforms in the ecosystem so on passive starts working for you as soon as you register somebody so once the database has somebody's name in it it starts a, an automatic cycle of marketing that our on passive is really good at so we continue to add courses we speak about different aspects of the seven mountains, for instance. So I could have seven courses on the seven mountains and each one could be an hour long and we could get really deep in how to market to the mountain. But with each course, there could be a fee tied to it or each one I could give away. The idea here in this early part of On Passive is to give as much away as we can because we know the bigger we spread the bigger the viral effect's gonna be. And so we don't have to worry about just making money in the beginning. It's more important to get the word out and spread the word to more people than anything else. The last one we talk about is Obless, probably everybody's favorite when you talk about, it's better to give than receive. And with Obless, we take and share our stories of our favorite things we've done in our mission trips, our social causes and nonprofits that we support, the NGOs that we belong to, all the humanitarian causes like the homelessness that we're talking about with Chris Johnson. These similar situations we share with our peer group. We share with our family. We share with our church. We put it out on the social media out there about what we believe, what's our passion. And so the, the idea here is to share interesting meaningful things that are passionate to you. And once you do that, you catch people's imagination and you ask them a couple of questions. This is the way I would do it. Ask them to look at your new old blessed platform to see how they can um, help you understand how to use it better, how it can be beneficial for causes that you believe in or that they believe in. So you can, you can transfer that. How is this going to benefit me to how can it benefit you? How can it benefit your cause? So it's a quick leap from my cause to their cause. And they can start seeing in their mind how Obles could help things that they believe in. And so as we go forward, we're asking for advice and suggestions in this area, not for them to join and donate. It's a big difference between asking for something to be given to you. When you're asking for advice, people are ready to give advice. 
they're ready to help with suggestions a lot more than they want to join a cause or donate money to something that they don't understand. So think about that. Tell them up front that there's no obligation to do either, so that they're not on the defensive, that you're looking for advice on how it can work best to help organizations. Tell them that the registration is to, is something that they'll do for free and that they can arrange an O-Connect meeting with you and they can see the O-Bless. They can even use the O-Bless for free, perhaps. Ash did mention that, so maybe that's possible. And they could use it themselves for an organization that they believe in. And so right there, you've got two opportunities. Anytime they're going to use O-Bless or O-Connect, they're going to register. And if they register, they're in your group. When they're in your group, then you can give them a PowerPoint presentation, just five or 10 slides to make an impact in a statement. Again, the idea is not to sell them on the project. It's not to get them to donate to the project. It's to get them to understand the depth of what OBLESS is and have them make a suggestion about how they could see it being used. And then from there, they'll understand it. And then they'll become more likely to become a purchaser of something that our passive does in the future. If that makes sense to you, then again, the goal is reached and it's not about getting registrations, but you will get registrations, you will get sales, you will get conversions just by using this simple formula. So let the products and on passives do the selling. Let the products of on passives sell themselves, let on passives automated system sell it itself to those who register. Beautiful system, you don't have to do anything. Your job as a founder is to max out the registrations in the first week of the marketing campaigns. That's really the best job. If you could do that before the marketing campaigns finish, before the global launch, you set yourself up to have a lot of people on your first line. You set yourself up to have many more people come in later and you'll be successful without having to do anything other than sharing information. You're not selling, you're sharing information. So get the snowball rolling downhill and capture that momentum now before the global campaign even goes into effect. This is something you can do right now. The marketing campaigns will provide plenty of push once that ball gets rolling. Remember, three snowballs is better than one. Three snowballs comes when you get three people to register and let the O Bless and the O Connect, the O Net, let that snowball get rolling downhill and let On Passive do the work with the marketing campaigns to, to roll them down the hill even further and get bigger and bigger so that when global launch comes, you've got it made. You're in the gravy, you're in the green, you got apples falling from the trees from day one. And that's the goal. That's what people want, and that's what I wanted to share with you. The MSI, the MSI multiple source of income technology comes from having multiple products, the ecosystem, multiple physical products, as Ash has mentioned, having multiple positions acting for your family, and having multiple numbers of people who come in as customers and resellers after you and your team. It's better than a standalone strategy of just having one, having multiple sources of income. So I thank you for the attendance on this today. This has been an outstanding time to get together. And uh, what I want to do is hear from you in the comments. If this is on a YouTube right now, I want to have you write something in the comments of your ideas about how the seven mountains could benefit on passive. And we're going to have some sharing time afterwards in different venues on live zooms and different facebook groups we'll play the video and have live conversations afterwards so it's been a pleasure to be with you it's dr bill williams on passive leadership council member and a proud on on passive arian how do you say that <laughs> i'm a proud founder how about that glad to be here with you guys and i'll see you on the next video Thanks.